it's Lizzie All at Old Stables Crafts. Thank you very much for joining me again today. I hope you had a fantastic weekend. I had a great time with my virtual catalogue launch. Uh, that was on Saturday. And I hope everybody enjoyed themselves. So, yes, great fun. Great, great fun. Um, I'm going to give due warning. One of the cats is in the room. And he does tend to be a little bouncy. So, fingers crossed, we'll get through this without too many interruptions. However, um, I'm just watching him to make sure he doesn't leap onto my laptop, which could be interesting. Um, so, last week I showed you a card with stripes of colour and they were separated um, by a tiny weeny little gap uh, and they kind of faded to each end. Uh, today I'm doing something similar but different. So, this obviously is kind of rainbow-ish, but I'm going to do a slightly different one now. Uh, this is obviously the one I prepared, um, which is, I'm going to have to try and remember, Poppy Parade, Pumpkin Pie, Daffodil Delight, Granny Apple Green, Bermuda Bay, Pacific Point and Gorgeous Grape. I've used the same technique that I used last week, so it's sponge daubers with the addition of a tiny little bit of glycerin. Um, glycerol in some parts of the world, but glycerin, um, a, ma a, a mask, and yeah. So this, I have used the painted poppies, this little uh, poppy here, and then from Many Mates, I have used Life is Better With You. For the one we're going to make together, I'm going to use the Beautiful World stamp set, and I'm going to use Life is a Beautiful Journey and the Feather. So it's all from one um, stamp set, but we're going to use different colours. So, first things first, a piece of cardstock. Now I will probably trim this down. I trimmed down the previous one that I did um, and added two mats because it just seemed to work better that way. The first thing you need to do is check that your card is straight. Now I've got a T rule, but obviously you can just line it up with your um, grid lines as well. And then you need to stick that down. So these are two not particularly tacky bits of washi tape. And I've got my mask, which I have cut using the rectangle stitched dies and it's this one here so it's the largest of the ones off to one side so it's the largest of the sort of thinner longer ones uh, and I just used a piece of the backing paper that you get your designer series paper on um, now the way to get this straight is I've got the um, off cut so we now know that this is straight. We want this to be kind of in the middle. So I've got the bits um, and I will come on to someone made a very good suggestion and I'm going to explain why I haven't done it. But it was a very good suggestion. So I'm going to by eye um, look at. See if I can get that reasonably in the middle by eye. I only want it by eye. And what I'm going to do is just check that it is straight on itself because we've got our T rule um, and just check that it is straight. And if this is straight, when I lay this over the top, assuming I don't move it, this will also be straight. And then this I'm going to stick down with some more washi tape. Now I'm not so fussed to take the stick off this. Um, if I could get the end up, that would be a big bonus. So I just want one long piece, which I'm going to cut into two or tear into two. And just do, oops, one and two. Now, I, as, as I said, I'm probably going to cut down the mat that's underneath. So if I'm a little askew, I'm not too worried. Just want to get those bits of fluff out of the way. Now, someone very sensibly suggested that because I use one of these per go, um, because I don't want to get 
cross-contaminated with my ink. Um, I'm cutting a new one for each project that I do. The suggestion was, and it is a very good suggestion, that I should use window sheet. I'm not a great one for die cutting window sheet. I'm just not very good at it. Um, I think it's a brilliant idea. I'm just a failure when it comes to die cutting window sheet. So, hmm, not happening. Um, tried, failed. OK, so my colour palette this time is Bumblebee, Cinnamon Cider, Terracotta Tile, Rococo Rose, Melon Mambo and Rich Razzleberry. And I'm going to start from left to right. And I will be doing it as a horizontal rather than a vertical. So the first thing I need is my Bumblebee sponge dauber and my tweezers so that I don't end up getting ink all over myself. So one Bumblebee sponge dauber. Now the first thing I'm going to check is whether it needs any more glycerin. I know that I've used glycerin on this. The glycerin stays in the sponge dauber for quite a while. So if it kind of smudges, it's got glycerin in. So all I then need to do is load up with some more ink. Uh, you can do it by pressing the ink pad uh, with a block. Um, but if it's already got glycerin in, I'm quite happy just to go into a corner. And then all I'm going to do is come in. Now this time, I want quite a definite line. So whereas last week I was wanting that kind of woof, uh, this time I want quite a definite line, um, so I am trying to make sure I get into those corners. That's all I need the bumblebee for, because I've got to get five more colours in. So that's bumblebee done. So let's put that away and pick up my cinnamon cider, which I haven't yet labelled these. Um, I must, but I haven't. So this, again, has got a reasonable amount of glycerin in it because it's done that kind of smudgy bit. So let's add some cinnamon cider. Now you want to blend into the bumblebee, but you don't want to blend all of the bumblebee away. Um, so you want it to... And I might actually just grab my bumblebee back and just very gently go over the, the edge as it were, just so that those two colours are reasonably well blended in. Get rid of that piece. So that's Bumblebee and Cinnamon Cider. The next colour I need is Terracotta Tile, which again I already have a sponge dauber for, but I need to Yep, that's got glycerin in. The glycerin basically kind of stays there. I um, don't know quite how it actually works that way, but it does. So terracotta tile. The other thing you can do, of course, is pick up from the, um, the lid. So if you've got colour in the lid, you can do that. Someone did ask me whether I used different sponge daubers for with and without glycerin. No, I don't. Um, Versamark you can, uh, it's not as good, but you can use um, glycerin to re-ink your Versamark. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but it can be done. Right, I'm going to bring back in my cinnamon cider and just add a bit more of that. So what we want is a reasonably um, gentle blend. I also want to get rid of that slightly harsh. might need a bit more glycerin on my bumblebee. Uh, it does help a lot with a tiny amount, um, it, but it does help with the blend. So there we go, that should help a wee bit. Actually I just want to clean the top of my pot before I... Now I've had this pot of glycerin for Ooh, I don't know, over a year? Um, you don't really use very much. Uh, I'll leave those out because that will save me having to go and get them again. Right, Rococo Rose. Again, I think I have a dauber all Rococo Rosed. That doesn't seem to have had glycerin on. 
So let's, you, you almost get a wet mark if it has. And again, tiniest amount. And then just kind of work it in a bit. Rococo Rose. I have to say I had great fun choosing the colours. I wanted ones that kind of went, you know, blended reasonably well together. But I did want there to be a very definite, good grief, how have we got from that to that? Right, so that's Rococo Rose. Next we need Melon Mambo. So I need my other box. So Melon Mambo, is that Melon Mambo? No. Mango Melody, oh there we are, I've found it. Melon Mambo. And then we need Rich Razzleberry. So let's, that's Blackberry Bliss. That's Rich Razzleberry. Right, okay. Melon Mambo. Possibly had glycerin on, not convinced. Now it's had glycerin on. And you see, it's just a completely different look. I don't know if you can see that, it may just be me because I'm close to it. So I'm going to pick up some ink from the lid because it's there anyway and add that. Now the reason I chose Melon Mambo over, for example, Magenta Madness is I think of Melon Mambo as more of a, um, a kind of dusky blue pink, if that doesn't sound odd, probably does. Um, and because I'm going from Rococo Rose, I wanted something that was a bit dusky, whereas Magenta Madness is kind of in your face. Right, Rich Razzleberry. Again, probably needs some glycerin. There we go. And you can feel when you use it, totally different resistance, well, or lack thereof. Right. Now I am going to go back in on some of the areas to um, to just smooth out some of the edges because they are not straight. So, rich razzleberry. There we go. So that's my rich razzle done. Let's come back in with my melon mambo and just straighten the edge. Back with my Rococo rose and straighten that edge. And terracotta tile. Cinnamon cider. And last but not least, bumblebee. So let's pop the lid on there, having wiped it first. I don't particularly want rich razzleberry on a so saffron blend. Not a good colour combination. Clear those out of the way, pop those on a lid so that I know that they've got to go away properly, and it's moment of truth time. So let's lift that up, ooh, finger right in the rich raspberry. Not the best move I've ever made. So there we go, let's pop that in the bin. And. Now the best way to get sticky tape off is to do it flat. As I say, the key is to not have it too sticky in the first place, but do it flat rather than up, um, and then you're less likely to get a tear if it's going to. So there we are, that is our P2 
piece. So let's bring in the tool, the tool of truth. That looks straight. Yep. So therefore it will be straight in every direction. Let's see if it's reasonably even. So we've got just under an inch there and an inch there. Sorry, just over an inch there. Right, so I can trim from this side. And then here we've got just under an inch and just under an inch. So I need to trim from both ends on that one. So put my T-rule away. I'm to get rid of that if I can without it smudging. OK, so I want to cut that down just a teeny weeny weeny teeny weeny bit. So now, of course, I can't remember which was which side. Uh, OK, so that's going to there. That's going to right. So this seems to be the the narrower side. So I want this down by about an eighth of an inch. So I think I'm just going to be slightly cautious and do a sixteenth at a time. I will have the final measurements on my blog post. Um, so you can pick those up from there. Now, I haven't yet decided which colour mats I'm going to use. That is part of the, in inverted commas, design process. So that goes to there. That goes to... Right, so this I think I can take an eighth off without any problem. OK. Yep, that's there or thereabouts. So, I'm thinking possibly Richard Vesselberry. Let's find my regals. So, Rich Razzlebury. And I wonder if Rich Razzlebury and Terracotta Tile. Or maybe Rococo Rose, actually. Yes, or hmm. not convinced by the Rococo Rose, so let's try Terracotta Tile. Ooh, I quite like that. Apart from anything else, I want this to be a more masculine finish. So let's go that way. And I also need a card base. Don't have a white card base out, so let's sort that out. Nothing quite like planning in advance, is there? And this is nothing quite like planning in advance. Right, so half a sheet of Whisper White, which for those of us using International A4 is 14.9 centimetres. Whoever dreamt up that International A4 was going to have such stupid measurements. It's 21 centimetres across, um, so 10 and a half, um, but 29 point something ridiculous up and down. So why it couldn't have been 30 by 21 and a half, I do not know. OK, so, and I think I'm going to go from Bumblebee to Rich Razzlebury. Now, this one I need to cut down by an eighth of an inch on two sides. So I don't know why I put that away. So I want that to be three quarters, three and three quarters by five and a half. And then the side, the whisper white I've cut down by an eighth, and this is an eighth bigger. But as I say, the um, measurements will be on my website, and the link to that is immediately below. While I'm putting this together, um, very good time for you to think about subscribing to my channel. Um, it really does make a difference. So if you would like to help me out at no cost to you, uh, subscribe is good. If you would like to know when I am, um, I have videos posting, also click the notification bell. Um, I do do some, I mean I have a kind of regular time of 
posting but equally I do have some that are irregular um, because I'm involved in a number of design teams um, I do I do um, have some that go live at other times now I'm going to stick this down to my card front and then I'm going to do the stamping on this piece which I haven't forgotten well I had really but I've remembered now so for this one the feather is going to go outside the piece of uh, the piece that we've coloured I'm going to use my Stamparatus because I want it to be really really black um, and because I'm using Memento uh, the easiest way of making sure you get a really black image is to stamp it more than once and because I'm using a red rubber set of stamps um, I don't need to worry about having the mat in so oh, I've got my stamps out silly girl silly silly girl so I'm going to have beautiful journey there and then the feather there but I am going to stamp the feather separately um, so let's do life's a beautiful journey first uh, I'm just going to pop a block under there because that will give me some support while I'm inking stamp case will work really well for that as well so let's ask, give that a good press and up and you can see it just it just needs a little bit more probably three goes and a bit more pressure at this end the end that's nearest to the hinge does need a bit more pressure yep just a bit more at this end so I'm going to not ink up the full I'm just going to do the life's a beauty happy with that so I can take this out and turn it around and now pop this down and the reason I want the feather to be separate is because in an ideal world I would like it to be coming just off I shall have it just a little bit further away just off the end of the L Let's go there. So it looks as if it's probably something from Harry Potter, actually. Um, a magic quill. And again, probably need to do it three times. With stays on, you could get away with doing it once, but then you've got the whole stays on cleanup. And I'm just lazy frankly. Right, three will do. There we go. So we can oh, pick up our magnet, remove that, clean that up in a moment and just finish off our cards. Now if you wanted you could put this up on um, dimensionals. I don't think it needs to be because it's it's got so many layers anyway uh, and I'm going to use my seal I keep hoping in an odd way that it's going to run out because then I could do a and this is how you change your seal but I'm yeah it's just not running out as well just for good measure yeah it's going on for ages very impressed oh and the sun's now coming round it comes out from behind a well a it's just come out from behind a cloud uh, that one that one should just about be enough for the end of the video so Whoa, 24 and a half minutes, good heavens. So there we go. So that is our more masculine version. That's our more feminine version, but, you know, they're both interchangeable. I hope you like them. If you do, please give them a thumbs up. If you want to see more um, 
pictures of them and what have you, then you can get to my website just by following the link in the description bar below. As I say, if you'd like to subscribe down in the bottom right hand corner, I would be thrilled. I'm aiming for 9,000 subscribers and then I'm going to do a bit of a giveaway. Um, and I'm at 8,600 and something, can't remember what at the moment. Um, so we're getting there, but just need a few more people to, to sign up and we'll be getting even closer. Anyway, I hope you have a fantastic week. Thank you very much for joining me this morning and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Don't forget, if you've got any questions or comments, below the description bar. Thanks a lot. Bye.